Thank you, Lord God. Welcome. So happy to have everybody here. So happy to have you here. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to have to preach. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. God bless all of you. Whatever time you'll catch this replay, God bless all of you. Amen. Well, we're already late. Let's go on and have a little church and give God some praise. How many know that he's worthy to be praised? Sing with me. Down at the cross where my Savior died. Down where from cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Precious name. Glory to his name. Come on, clap your hands. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name. Precious name. Glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied. Singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name, glory to his name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood applied, singing glory to his name. One more time, glory to his name, precious name, glory to his name there to my heart was the blood applied glory to his name hallelujah come on and send us some hearts right there on facebook we are so thankful to god and glory to his most precious amazing name the saints are in the house. We are live right here. We had some trouble with YouTube, but God didn't allow us to be shut down today. Thank God for Facebook. Uh, that was my first time trying to do live with an audience on YouTube. So um, I'm going to be working on that all night tonight. I want y'all to pray for me. God is teaching us new skills in this season. And I have literally had very little rest. <laughs> and so forgive me for how I may look. But I just thank God to be with the church today. We have 103 at this point. I am recording this for YouTube and I'll post it later for the saints that we may have missed over on YouTube. But I am so thankful to God for bringing us together again just one more time that the Lord did it for us. And he didn't have to do it, but he did. Are you excited about Jesus? This is Resurrection Sunday. And no devil is going to hold us back or hold us down today. Because God is good when? All the time. And all the time, God is sure enough good. Now, I have a worship service actually planned for you with some live video for uh, our service today. I'm not sure that all of that is going to work, but we're going to give it a try and see because I work real hard on this and um, I want to share this with you if we can get everything to play and to work. So I, I want to say, first of all, thank you for your patience. You are the greatest church anywhere. You're amazing. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much for how you have stayed with us through all the transitions this morning. And you know what it tells me? It tells me two things. Number one, we have a smart church that you're able to follow your pastor anywhere. That's a blessing from God. But it also tells me that you want this. 
and you know that you need God's word and God's spirit today. And it's such a blessing to welcome all of you here on the live. We have pastors coming in, our precious members that are here. I'm so excited. You know what? We would have missed some of you if we had stayed on YouTube this morning. But next Sunday, hopefully, we can do both YouTube and Facebook Live. So here's what I want to try and do. I want to try and play uh, what I've prepared for you today for our worship service on this blessed resurrection sunday let's see if it's going to work all right and if not then i'll come right back and i'll go straight into the word for today but welcome everybody we are so excited it just makes me feel so good it warms my heart to be with my church today on resurrection sunday and to all the first time visitors will you please stand <laughs> We may recognize you. We praise God for you being here. And I want you to fellowship with each other in the comments. I see a whole lot of you on um, and, uh, and and fellowship one with another. This is the way we're doing it right now in this season. And we thank God for our family and for all of our guests that are sharing with us today. So let me try now to give this a shot to see if everything is going to uh, line up since we did have a few issues a little bit earlier and if not, again, I'll keep right on rolling. One thing about me, you're not going to keep me down, devil. No, no, I serve a risen Savior, and he knows how to take care of his children. Won't he do it, somebody? So let's give this a shot and see how it turns out. And if not, I'll be right back with the word, okay? Here we go. Mountaintop family and friends, this is our call to worship on Resurrection Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord is our strength and our song. He has become our victory. You are our God and we will praise you. You are our God and we will exalt you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. New Mountaintop family and friends, on this Resurrection Sunday morning, this is our call to worship. Good morning, church. If you please bow your head and join me for prayer this morning. For gracious Father, the ruler and maker of all things, for Lord, we come to you to say thank you. Lord, we come to you thanking you for allowing us to see a day that we've never seen before. Lord, right now we come thanking you, Lord, for this special morning. Morning that Jesus rose with our power in his hand. He gave his life, Lord, for us so that we may have it more and more abundantly, O oh, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, from you taking us from, from death unto life. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Right now, my Father, we come asking, Lord, that you go and see about all of those who've lost loved ones. Lord, we come asking right now, Lord, that you come bring them peace in the middle of their storm. Right now, Lord, we know that there are a lot of people sick right now, Lord, and so right now we ask that you go into the hospitals. We go and ask that you put your loving arms around each and every one of them, O Heavenly Father, and as you leave, Lord, we ask that you put an angel at the door to bring them through. Lord, right now, my Father, there are people, Heavenly Father, who don't know where their next meal is going to come from, Lord. There are people who right now, Lord, who are worried about their bills, oh, Heavenly Father, who are worried about their mortgages right now, Lord. And Lord, right now we come asking that you bring peace. For Lord, as Bishop said last week, Lord, you allowed it to happen. And since you allowed it to happen, you're going to see your people through it. Lord, we can't give you enough praise right now, Lord, because you are so worthy. So, Lord, as the country may be shut down, Lord, we know you don't shut down. 
we know, Lord, you never rest. And so right now we call on that great name of Jesus that's able to move mountains, oh Lord. Lord, give us that faith that's able to move the mountains that stand in our way right now. Lord, right now we come asking for stronger peace. Right now, Lord, we come ask for stronger faith right now, Lord, like you and you only can bring. And you're so amazing, God, in everything that you do. So right now, Lord, I ask that we take this time out to just focus more on you because you're going to make this thing right. You're amazing, God. And there's never a day that goes by that we can't ever give you enough praise. We actually continue to bless our pastor, Lord. Continue to give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. We thank you this day for him, Lord, and what he has meant to each and every one in our lives. Lord, just actually continue to bless our members, oh, Heavenly Father. Continue to bless our video streamers, oh, Heavenly Father, for those right now who don't know you in the presence of their sins, Lord, we come asking, Lord, that you move, move like only you can. And Lord, if there's anyone we've offended along this journey, Lord, we come asking for your forgiveness. For, Lord, we love you. For, Lord, we love you. For, Lord, we love you. Because you first loved us. Lord, you're amazing. So right now, Lord, we just come giving you all the honor and all the glory. In your son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. Hello, welcome to New Mountain Top News on Resurrection Sunday. This is a reminder that we will begin our virtual Sunday school class on Resurrection Sunday from 8.15 to 9.15 a.m. with our very own Deacon Michael Polk. To tune in, please call the number and use the access code displayed on your screen. Attention all women, please join the Women of Excellence in another virtual Bible study exploring Proverbs 31. We will begin our She 31 Woman of Valor Bible Plan on Resurrection Sunday. And each Sunday, starting April 19th, we will have a video discussion of the plan using Zoom video conferencing. If you haven't already joined, please sign up using the link displayed on your screen. For women's ministry updates and reminders, please join our Women of Excellence group me. For instructions on how to join or for questions or concerns, please email our Women of Excellence team at w-o-e-n-m-t at gmail.com. We are so excited to continue our fellowship with you. This is a reminder that our 30 days of prayer with Bishop will continue this Monday at noon. Thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. This is also a reminder that there are three ways to give. Number one, you may give online at www.newmttop.org. Number two, you may give by mail at 7822 Connors Road, Winston, Georgia, 30187. And the third way you may give is in person, and we will practice social distancing at the church on Sundays from 11 o'clock a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m., or Mondays from 10 o'clock a.m. to 2 o'clock p.m. 
Congratulations to our on Mrs. Jane Rookard for being named Teacher of the Year at Chapel Hill Middle School. Congratulations, Jane. Happy anniversary to all couples celebrating anniversaries and a happy birthday to everyone celebrating birthdays this month, including our very own Bishop A. Reginald Lippman, who will celebrate his big day at home on April 30th. New Mountaintop, we care about you and we're praying for you and your family. Continue to check in with us to let us know how you and your family are doing. If you have a prayer request, please email your prayer to prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. Continue to be safe by practicing social distancing. We love you. God bless you. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. We're so thankful to God for his goodness to us and how he's blessing us right now, right now, right now. I want you to be blessed by this selection you're about to hear now. This is going to blow your mind. Watch this.
I told you. I told you. I told you. You got to trust me. <laughs> I told you that was going to blow your mind. Man, I want to give a special shout out to our incomparable minister of music and to the new mountaintop corral and to the gentleman who put that together for us. Derek, thank you. Great idea. I think that blessed you. All of you who are watching this, I know that blessed you. It blessed me every time I listen to it over and over and over again. Let's go now to the word of God. Get your Bible and go with me now to the gospel of Luke. Short message today, but the power of the message is not in the length. It's in the Lord. Let's go to the word. Luke chapter number 23 and verse number 46 reads like this. And I hope that you have your Bible. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. I want to talk to you on this resurrection celebration from this simple subject. Put it all in his hands. In this passage from Luke chapter number 23, we see Jesus dying on the cross. He has hung on the cross for six hours from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. This is now the final of the seven statements that he made while suffering on the cross. Crucifixion was cruel. It was the worst form of death and punishment. They had whipped Jesus all night long. They had beat him. They had plucked hairs out of his beard. They had made mockery of him, made fun of him. They had taken his clothes off of him, which had attached to the blood that was on him. And so when they ripped his clothes off, literally they ripped skin along with it. And they gambled over who would have his clothing as a souvenir. Jesus ends his own death scene with a bang. He said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And after he said that, he breathed his last. As we look at this powerful story, this life-changing pinnacle of a story that is the hope and the very crux of our belief in faith as Christians. We learn lessons from Jesus' last statement that I want to lift up before you right now. Here's number one. He is God over the external. He is God over the external. We see Jesus in this last of his seven statements, and he is declaring his utmost dependence upon his father, the true and living God. He is crying out to God because he recognizes that he is the God over the external circumstances of his life. And what I need you to understand is that despite his sufferings, he still saw God as sovereign. Anytime you write the book and anytime you are the chief editor of the book, it gives you the right to change the story, to alter the ending or to make the character come out on top, even though they've gone through the bottom. And that's what Jesus is saying. I know who you are. You are the author. You wrote my story. It was you that led me to this point and you can see me through everything it. in your life that you are going through right now is child proof, which means it won't hurt his child. And you are a child of God and the God that we serve is still in charge of the external. I don't care what it looks like, what it feels like, what they say on the news. God is in charge of the external. So you put it all in his hands. Not only is he the God of the external, he is the God of the internal. He's the God of the internal. Look at the first part of the verse again. 
And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, I want you to notice the change in his tone. He cries out with a loud voice. But wait a minute. Why is he crying with a loud voice when he's struggling just to breathe? When he's pushing himself up on the nail in his foot and pulling himself up on the nails in his hands, how is he able to still cry out to talk to God? Well, I want to tell you why. It's because the God we serve is the God of not only the external, he's the God of the internal. Let me put it another way. This is the first time in over 2,000 years of church history that the church has not been in the sanctuary worshiping together on the most holy day of the year almost seems like we are on a cross, like we're struggling just to breathe. Churches are struggling just to exist. But listen, there's something on the inside that makes us raise our voice that if we have to preach from an iPad and worship in our living room, there's something on the inside that our great God is doing to stir us up And we are reminded today that even though we can't go to the sanctuary, we are the sanctuary. You see, today, being out of church, physically out of the building, is eerily reminiscent of the first Resurrection Sunday. Come here. I want to bless you real good. Because Jesus' followers left him other than John, Mary, and the other Marys. And at the foot of the cross is Mary, his mother, and John, the beloved disciple, and a few ladies, and that's it. The others had run off and left him. Remember, Judas goes and hangs himself out of a sense of guilt when he could have been forgiven. Listen, don't end your life with a period when God wants to bless you with a comma. Judas hangs himself. Well, where are the other ten? The ten are gathered together in one house together. Only ten of them up to ten now. Only up to ten. Watch this. And the government has mandated that the church can't gather. The Christian church was on lockdown, on shutdown. And so these ten, only ten now, are gathered scared in this house. They are gathered, but they are fearful. They are gathered, but they don't know what's next. They are gathered, but they are feeling a pandemic predicament happening in the world because the world is closing in on the church and there's an attack on the Christian church at the time of the text and 10 are gathered together in the house They can't go outside. They are social distancing. They can't do anything else but quarantine. And all of a sudden, word comes to the 10 that are gathered socially distancing without hope, not knowing when things are going to change. And the good news is this. Jesus is still alive. I want to preach to somebody right now that feels like you locked in, locked down, shut in, shut down. God wants you to know today that there's something internally that the government cannot order it to end. There's a joy that comes from knowing that our Savior is alive and well. Listen, we can't gather in the sanctuary, but we can lift our hands. We can still preach to you over the internet. I can still feed my flock over the internet because even though we are shut down, I'm still standing up saying, I know the man from Galilee. There's an internal peace, an internal joy, and that's why Jesus cries out from the cross, raises his voice to let the them know I've got something to say. <laughs> and not only have I got something to say, I've got a medium I can still say it through. I still got a voice. Is there anybody watching me right now that can say, I feel closed in, I feel sequestered, but I've still got a voice. I've still got a praise. I've still got something to say. I still got to talk about how good God is to me. But Jesus teaches us, put it in his hand. Number three, he is the God over the eternal, the God over 
the eternal. He He knew they would take his clothes. He knew they would take his corpse. But he says, I'm deciding who has my spirit. That's my choice. And I reserve the right to declare where my faith lies. Oh my God. And so he says, before I die, let me make one thing clear. Y'all can take my clothing. You can even take my crusade and you can take my corpse, but you cannot take my core. What is the core? It is the essence of who we are. It is that spiritual supernatural part of us. In fact, he said, y'all are not even really killing me. Uh, This is my life and I choose to lay it down. And if I lay it down, I can pick it up by myself again. In other words, stay tuned. I'll be right back after this mess. That's what Jesus was telling them. He says, I decide to lay my life down. You're not killing me. I'm laying my life down and I'm going to decide to pick it up again in three days. The fourth statement is where he says, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Now, it sounds almost as if that uh, Jesus is complaining that God has walked off and left him and he feels isolated and alone. And even though that sounds good, it's erroneous because what he was doing in the fourth statement was quoting Psalm 22. And you must know that Psalms was the praise and worship book. It was the hymnal for the Jewish church. When Jesus says in the fourth statement, which is in the middle of it, he says, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The reality is that he was not saying, God, I feel left. He was saying, I am going to worship you in the middle of this. I'm going to praise you in the middle of this. I'm going to quote a psalm in the middle of of this. Now watch this now. When you get to the seventh statement, which is our text for today, and he says, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit, it almost sounds as if he is feeling isolated again, but pay close attention. In the fourth statement, he says, my God. But in the seventh and final statement, he says, Father, watch this now. In the middle of it, he says, my God. But in the end of it, he says, Father. And I want to tell you that when you feel forsaken, if you will praise him in the middle of it and keep going farther, you will experience the power and presence of the Father. You see, you may be one praise away from Father. And that's what Jesus says to us in that last statement. But but when we look at this last statement, there's another thing that you have to understand about this verse today, and that's this right here. Not only was he quoting scripture in the middle of it, in the fourth statement, but in this final statement, he did it again. Because this is from the Psalms as well. And when he says, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit, he was only quoting another Psalm that he had learned as a little Jewish boy. For they would teach their children to pray this prayer as the sign of their utmost dependence on the Heavenly Father. Here's what I'm trying to say. In the middle of it, he praised him. At the end of it, he hollered out. You got to understand that if you praise him in the middle of it, he'll give you enough voice to speak up, to declare to everybody around you who is watching you and wondering what you're gonna do, I still have control of this. And Jesus hollers out, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He wanted everybody around him to know, y'all don't have control over me. Now watch this. They had already put him in a posture where his arms were up and his body was down. But when he breathed his last, he was simply saying, God, I know you got this. So now I can exhale. (sighs) And there's somebody watching me that you need to put your hands up right now in your bed, in your living room, in your man cave, in your woman cave, while you're eating breakfast. Before you take the next sip of coffee, you need to put your hands up and say, God, I know you got this. God, I know you're going to keep me. Now I can rest. God, I know you've got this. 
Now I can go to sleep. And that's what Jesus did. He teaches us how to leave and how to live. Trust God with everything. Put it in his hands and you go on and exhale and know he's got this. When he gave up his last breath, he dropped his head. And to those around the cross, it may have looked like it was over. And it was. But they didn't know what was over. You see, what was over was that was the final curtain call. It was Jesus saying, I have performed with excellence the will of the one who sent me here. Now is only time for me to take a bow. God knows what you're going through. He will see you through. He'll carry you through. But you got to put it all in his hands. Well, bless God, when you put it all in his hands, you'll discover that even though one day you'll lay down and die because you lay it down in his hands, you'll get up in his hands and you'll discover that the grave will never have authority over your life. Death can never control you. Jesus died on that Friday on Calvary's cross, but he got up early Sunday morning with all power in his hands. Don't you love him today? I know I do. Come on and give him some worship right there in your home because he's a risen savior. He's alive. He is all powerful and he has you and everything concerning you right in his hand. If by peradventure you're watching me today and you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and savior, maybe someone sent you a link to this video. I want to pray with you and pray for you right now and lead you in a sinner's prayer. Jesus died and him hanging on the cross was actually a plus sign that adds life eternal, salvation, joy, peace, favor forevermore. It adds it to our life. But without the cross, it's nothing but division, subtraction. You don't want to be divided from God. Pray this prayer with me right now, Lord Jesus, come into my heart i believe that you died on calvary's cross just for me i receive you now as my personal lord and savior i confess i am a sinner i repent of my sins i confess you as my savior your blood covers my sin in jesus name amen well family I just want to thank God for those of you who prayed that prayer for the first time and welcome you into the body of Christ. You are now a believer. You are now safe and secure from all alarm, according to Romans chapter number 10. Well, praise God, everybody. Thank God for this Resurrection Sunday that we celebrate our true and living Savior. He's worthy and he's wonderful. And we love him today. Family, I love you. Make sure you join me right here, 12 noon, Monday through Friday, for our prayer and time of meditation, 30 days of prayer. Also, if you have a prayer concern, don't forget you can email me at prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. Well, I'm going to close this song with some of the kind of music that I love and I so appreciate. Again, Derek Weidman, our director of worship and arts at the church and our chorale and all who helped to put this worship experience together today. I'm going to post this on YouTube right after this so that our saints that on YouTube can see this. Everybody's not on social media, but everybody can see YouTube. I want to close today's broadcast with one of my favorite hymns of the church. Worship with me now. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow, 12 noon on Facebook Live for 30 days of prayer.
amazing grace. How sweet the the sound that saved a wretch Right now, I'm, I'm found. Twas I was blind, but. Was grace that Lord, to fear that same old grave. That grandmama's grave oh, up here. The